Hey campers, welcome to Theoretical Thursday here at Maker Camp. My name is Tyler. I am filling in for Nick Raymond who will be out um, Thursday, Friday, and then next Monday and Tuesday. So he'll be back on Wednesday. Um, so first off, I want to introduce our guest for today, uh, Bill Gerstel. He is going to show us how to build 10 Segrity Towers. And then we have our junior counselors, which are Max and Josie. Um, hey. hey guys, how you doing? So Good. All right. First off, I want to make sure you guys know that uh, under this post, uh, if you could put comments, all in caps, or questions, or sorry, questions, or answer all in caps if you guys have any questions or answers during uh, this broadcast. And then uh, if you guys want to join the Junior Counselor Hangout today at 1.30, make sure you post under this post saying, I want to join the Junior Counselor Hangout, and we will invite you to the circle, and then when it starts, you guys can join in. So first off, Bill, can you tell us about your background as a maker? Well, hi everybody. Bill Gerstel here, talking to you from Minneapolis. I don't know what it's like where, where you guys are, but it's hot here and it's been hot. So <laughs> on these days, there's nothing. Right yeah, there's nothing I'd rather do than hang out and make something in the shade. Mm -hmm. um, I started writing for Make Magazine. I think my first project was in Make Magazine Volume Four. And now we're up to 31. So I've I've had something in every every magazine since then. I I like to make stuff, and I write for Make. I'm a contributing editor there, and I write a column called Remaking History. And I think Remaking History is it's my favorite thing to do because I take some kind of famous uh, scientific thing from history and then make a model of it and show show people how to uh, how to make it themselves. And I just think that's it's kind of fun. Um, I write for uh, another magazine called Popular Mechanics. I'm the uh, ballistics and pyrotechnics editor there, and I get to have fun with that. Yeah, and I write cool. books. I yeah, and I, yeah, and I and I write um, uh, books. Uh, I, I, my best known book is a book called Backyard Ballistics, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a book full of kind of cool, edgy scientific stuff. And um, that's been real popular. I've written books about catapults and robots and flamethrowers and all sorts of stuff. And um, you know, it's just kind of what I do. I'm, I'm an engineer, and I guess I, I feel like sometimes I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I get to have fun all day long. I never know when I'm working, and I don't know when I'm playing. It's all kind of, kind of the mm -hmm. same. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. Well, I know I personally, and I'm sure the junior counselors here have built some of your projects for the magazine. Um, so I heard from a little birdie that uh, you might be releasing backyard ballistics. Oh, your your yeah. birdie tweets correctly. That's yeah. that is true. Actually, it's there's a brand new. Like I can't say it's brand new, but there's a whole lot of mm -hmm. new material in in backyard ballistics. I, it, the book is ten years old now, and it's sold like three hundred thousand copies, which, believe it me, is a it's a phenomenal number of copies for a book to sell. So I feel really lucky. But over ten years, you know, things change, and I've got feedback yeah. and better ideas. Oh, look, I I happen to have. What's the chances of this? Oh, uh, the wow. book in front of me. This is the yeah. new, the new backyard ballistics. And um, very if cool. You, if you get a chance, it should go on sale. Uh, well, by September first. That's less than thirty days away. So keep mm -hmm. it in mind for present. Sweet. Well, uh, to start off our project today, do you want to explain what tensegrity means of tensegrity towers? Okay. Well. Tensegrity is a is a building structure. It's it's a kind of a, a, a strange, almost well, it is an artistic way of constructing towers. Um, you know, when I first wrote the uh, the magaz the article for Make Magazine, I did a lot of research and I found out that um, it was invented. A lot of people say they invented it. It's one of those things where there's kind of a a uh, Oh, I don't know. Uh, an argument about who really is is the uh, the first guy to come up with this idea of a tensegrity tower. But basically, yeah. um, boy, I'm trying to look for an example here. Um, hey, can you hand me my iPad there? Thanks. Here, if I don't know if you can see this all right or not, but uh, that's my grandson. Don't look at that. Okay, <laughs> this is this is. Can you guys see that at all? I'm going to put it up yeah. to the camera. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, this is a a tower built by a really, really well-known sculptor named Kenneth Snelson. And Kenneth Snelson says he invented the idea of tensegrity. But you can see how it's something made of, of, of long, you know, long poles and, and uh, wires. And the mm -hmm. poles are in compression, and they're held together. This network of poles is held together by a network of wires, which are all in tension. So you've got 
sort of all the stresses for you civil engineers out there sort of divided. One is compressive stresses on the poles and one is um, uh, tension stresses on the wires and all together they make a, a structure that's been named tensegrity. The, the name was given to it by a, uh, a really famous architect and thinker named uh, Kenneth Snelson, uh, sorry, sorry, Buckminster Fuller. Mm -hmm. And uh, Buckminster Fuller sort of made the word tensegrity popular. Now, whether he invented it or Snelson invented it or some Frenchman 50 years before that invented it, I'm not here to say. I don't know. They all say they did. But in any event, it's a really cool structure. And um, what we're going to do today, hopefully, on this, on this podcast, today with the people we have right here, we're going to build our own tensegrity structure. And... Uh, it's an amazing thing to do. It's really fun, for one thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazingly fun to build these things, and you can do a lot with them. And what we're going to do is make the very, very simplest one. But you can build on mm -hmm. these uh, other ones to make them more and more um, uh, complex and more and more intricate. And it's, it's kind of a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, uh, if you're OK with it, let's get started. OK. Well, let's let's get let's get started. I think what we'll do here is have the junior campers and and me will both build a uh, the most basic structure mm -hmm. independently. Now, the basic okay. independent structure is called a tendule, and I made that name up. It doesn't really mean anything. It's like a module, but it's a tensegrity module, so I called it a mm -hmm. tendule. And that's what Buckminster <laughs> Fuller would Fuller would do all the time. He'd take two words and he'd put them together and. Uh, turn it into a cool sounding word. So what we're going to do now is make a tendule. So if uh, the campers at home have stuff in front of them, uh, hopefully people might have had a chance to look. Oh, look, there's a, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go to the, uh, I'll, I'll stop talking so you can see what's happening with the junior campers or junior council. Yeah, we got a little bit of a head start. We built the uh, the first story or I guess the first tendule uh, mm -hmm. already. So this is the uh, over the two, this is the right weave. We've Very only cool. got enough of these. Uh, we've only got enough of these uh, dowels with eye hooks prepared to do three stories. Mm -hmm. but, um, we've also got the, the original one that we test built when we ran his article in the magazine. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, Bill. Okay, so I guess we'll kind of just start in order. Um, I, I will say now that if you go online to the, uh, you know, to the website associated with this broadcast, you'll see a, uh, a post that lists all the uh, materials that you'll need to, uh, to construct your own tensegrity tower. Now, the first thing you'll need is uh, dowels. And I took 8-inch dowels. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll hold it right up to the camera. This is an 8-inch dowel. Now, the first thing you need to do is to drill a little tiny hole... Uh, you're not going to be able to see that, but there's a little Don't tiny it. hole. Okay, great. A little tiny hole drilled in the end of the dowel. And mm -hmm. then what you want to do is take a eye hook, a screw eye, a very small, it's called a screw eye. Let's see, get it away if you can see it. Now, you have to take pliers and bend the screw eye so it's open, so you can get a little cord in there. So the first okay. thing you need... So the first thing you need to do, and I've already done this, is to mm -hmm. bend them with the pliers so there's a little hole. And then once all the, the screw eyes are bent, then take it and screw it into the little hole you made on the end of the dowel. And when, when you're done, the dowel will look like this. There'll be, it's an 8-inch dowel with a screw eye on one end and a screw eye on the other end. Very so, cool. And I believe... What? Yeah, I go ahead. Oh, uh, what bit do we use to screw the hole? A uh, little tiny bit. I believe um, the magazine article specified 5 sixty-fourths. But 5 sixty-fourths, yeah. It's I just, just want to say for the campers out there, if you guys have any issues, if you have issues of Make Magazine, you have number six. The actual project build is right there. So I'm going to follow along in the book, and if you guys want to follow along and have like it's a... page 106. Page 106. Thank you very much, Max. Very good. Mm -hmm. We got right here. Okay. So after you make, you're going to need to make three dowels, okay. each with an opened screw eye at the end. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, after that, take your ruler. There's my ruler. There it awesome. is. And put your dowel next to it and mark a point 
three inches from one end, sorry, mm -hmm. and three inches from the other end, and do that on all three dowels. Actually, you already there's marked. If you can, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, we can. Oh, yeah. Here's a, yep, yep. They're marked. Yep. yep. Okay. So now you have. I'm. You know, we've kind of done some of this in advance, but now we've got three dowels with marks three inches from either end. Okay? Now comes the fun part. You need to weave them together. And um, Tyler, why don't you hold up your weave there and talk so people can see you. I actually don't have one oh, down here. Oh, I, I don't mean Tyler. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Max. Max, yeah. Max, hold up your, Max, sorry. Hold up your, uh, talk so people can see you and hold up your weave. So the, uh, there's the, uh, the magazine article specifies that there's two different types of weaves. There's a left weave and a right weave. I've already done a right weave here. So I'm going to do a left weave now. Can you hold it up so people can Yeah. And I have just hold up, the right, hold up the right weave and just hold it up there so people yeah. can see. Now point how, you can see how one, each piece has one, how can I put this? Um, they, I they, uh, each piece is in front of one and behind another. Perfect. Each piece is in front of one and behind another. Okay, I'll stop talking so people can see that, and you hold that up and show it again. Right. So this, for example, this piece, for example, this one's easy to see because it's a lighter color than the other two. It's mm -hmm. in front of this one, but it's behind this one. Uh, and so that kind of, it kind of locks together in a rotationally symmetric pattern. It's uh, lovely. And it's held together with rubber bands, so don't worry about having to get this stuff on before you but like, you know, and it falling apart. The rubber bands actually do a great job of holding it together while you get this on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so anyway, it's crossed, so you cross them at the marks, mm -hmm. one piece ahead, one piece behind, and then tie them together firmly with rubber bands. Uh, again, Max, hold it up, say something, and point to the rubber bands. So, yeah, so these, uh, as you can see, it's, I uh, haven't taken the rubber bands off yet, so you can still see them, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully. Um, I found the easiest way to get the rubber bands on is to is to not bother getting the whole thing woven together first. So, for example, I've just got these two banded together right now. I'm going to band mm -hmm. this one this one on uh, like so, and then I'm going to ba band this joint here. So, if you just do the joints one at a time, uh, yep, it's pretty okay. easy that way. Now, now the next thing you have to do. Okay, back up back to me then. The next thing you have to do. And it's going to be hard a little bit because I used clear stretchy cord, but you can see you have to, sorry, I went in front of me. What you need to do is get stretchy cord. This is called stretchy cord, and you buy this at the bead shop, okay? Mm -hmm. so you get stretchy cord at the bead shop, and it looks like this. It's thin. It's really hard to see, but it's this clear thing, and you need to tie them into loops. You need to make, for this, you need to make two pieces 15 inches long tied uh -huh. into a loop, two pieces 15 inches long tied into a loop and three pieces 10 inches long tied into a loop. Right. So junior counselors talk and do that. <laughs> yes, we've actually elected to use this, uh, this underwear elastic. It's not actually from underwear, don't worry, it's new, but it's, it's the same stuff that would go in underwear uh, because it's Thicker and sure. not not uh, not transparent. It'll show up better on camera. So, but it's it's the same. So you want to make two 15 inches long and three 10 inches long. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got one already. So we'll make another 15 inch one. And I'm going to cut it off. And then the other one was how long? 10 oh, inches. 10. So three 10 inches. Yep. All right. So I'll, uh, I guess I can. So I'll, I guess I can tie this one up. Uh, so I guess you want to use up as little of it as possible. It's not. Tie. It's not critical. Don't worry about it. But it's all. It's all non-critical. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess our elastic makes a pretty good substitute. We couldn't find the. We didn't make it to a bead shop to get the. There is one. Uh, there is one in. Uh, in. Uh, Potty that we could have gone to, but whatever. Yes, I know where the bead shop is. It's where I buy my incense. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, while they're doing that, I'm going to take the camera back, if that's okay, and hold this up. Now, this is, 
you can see how I have those three pieces there. They're tied mm -hmm. together, and you can see the rubber bands. Now, which, is, which you can't see so well on this, but you will be able to see on the junior counselor's page better, or uh, screen better, is that I've taken the 15-inch loop, okay, and I've connected the edges of the lower, of, of each piece that's on the lower edge in a triangle, mm -hmm. and I've connected each piece of the edges that are on the upper edge in mm -hmm. a triangle. There's two triangles there. So those two are both 15 inches? They're both 15 inches. I'll, I'll hold it this way. Maybe it'll be easier to see. I've got one loop that goes from here to here to here, and then I've got one loop that goes from here to here to here. Okay? okay. All right. So, so, all right. So if you designated each pole top and a bottom, then yeah. there would be one triangle formed by connecting a point, connecting a string between the top end of each pole and the bottom end of each pole, right? Exactly right. Awesome. So I'd actually done that wrong, so I'll just fix that real quick. Very cool. So, uh, Bill, are there any examples uh, of a tensegrity tower in real life or something that you could go see or maybe a famous sculpture? Great great. Yeah, great question there, uh, Tyler. Um, it's really not a practical way of building a building that would people would be in because okay. it, it, it's very, very flexible. Now, if you go to art galleries, for instance, you can see Snelson sculptures at the Hirshhorn Gallery in Washington, D.C., and it's marvelous. It's, it's so cool, and, and you see those from time to time. I've seen people build tensegrity chairs. I've seen people build tensegrity coffee know. tables, but I've never seen anybody build like a tensegrity electrical tower or something. They're just not strong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Max, how are you doing on the, uh, the loops? Well, okay, as you can see, we've got our, our first one fully strung up with the 15 Perfect. interviews. Okay, so, uh, so show, show people that uh, carefully. Uh, their time. Yeah, so as you can see, the top ones um, are all uh, connected together with uh, this. Oh, uh, so there's and one the triangle formed by one end of each pole, and there's another triangle formed by the other ends of yeah, each pole. Yeah, you kind of get a little bit of a Star of David thing going on here, actually. It's true. You do. Okay, now, back to me then. Now what you're mm -hmm. going to do is take the 10-inch loops that you have, these little 10-inch okay. loops, okay? And what you're going to do is connect the 10-inch loops from... You'll see that there's always two pieces that are close to each other, one's a top and one's a bottom. Well, let me get that up. Sorry. There's one piece, there's always two pieces that are close to each other. One's okay. a top and one's a bottom. So put a loop there, put a loop there, mm. put a loop there. Okay? So you've got two loops forming the big star and you've got three loops holding those stars to, sorry, three loops holding those stars together. And, right. uh, Okay, Max, why don't you go ahead and show people with yours. It's easier to see. Yeah, and I, it, it might be a good time to mention that the easiest way to get this stuff to stay on the loops is to just, uh, on the hooks, is to loop it around once. Yeah, loop it around a few times. Yeah, or a few times. Okay, we'll do that too. Could you also ultimately close the eyes back up? Um, you could, but there's really, yes, you could, absolutely. But there's no reason for it. Just keep looping until it, it's going to be really tense. Or you're going to put a lot of tension on it, and it won't matter in a little bit. I mean, you could, right. but I, I don't bother to do that. But they're not going to slip out because they're all under tension or compression, so they're really kind of stuck where they are. Right. Right? Right. right. Okay. Okay, so you let me know when you're there. In the meantime, uh, Tyler will entertain us. I got uh, <laughs> two of them. Um, so I actually had a question. Um, so how exactly... Does each pole stay in place? Because each one, each little band is providing a tension between another pole, and then that's providing a compression so that none of the none of the poles can move, like in space. Well, that, that that's right. What happens is, and this this is a a really sort of complex form of a building truss, and you've got the stresses um, of the whole structure you know, divided into compression and tension, mm -hmm. and it just so happens the way it's designed is that it, it's self-erecting, that is, it, it stays up by itself just because of the way it's designed. And you'll see that, if, if the question's for you or some, yeah. some, some viewer at home, you'll see that in a moment when we, when we cut the rubber bands and it springs to, to life. 
which we are about ready to do, actually. Okay. So let's let me take the let me take the uh, thing first. I'm going to continue to talk, and mm -hmm. I'm going to show people what what to do on this. Now I've got all the pieces put okay. together, and I'm going to take as my scissors. I have a scissors here, and I'm going to cut the bands, and uh, you'll see what happens. So I'm going to move the camera to put it down here a little bit. Can you get, can you see that? Wait a second. This is oh yeah, that's good. Um, Wait a second. Let me get it. I want to get it on the floor so you can see it. A little yeah. bit more down, and we can see it. Just so that, yeah, just I'll like that. My, my, my tech support guy is here. Very good. I want to get this right here. Okay, perfect. that's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to um, cut the bands, and this is the exciting part. So I'm going to cut this one. And there's a lot of bands in there, so it takes me a little bit to cut it. But I'll, there, there's one, and you can see it's starting to spring up a little bit. And now there's two, and that's starting to spring up a little bit. And now Very I'll do this cool. third one, and it's oh. going to spring up even more. But it won't spring up. Okay, so it's now, now you can maybe see this. Let me get. You can see how it's sprung up. Yeah. So it's starting yeah. to form a tendril, but it's low. It's not. It's not as I want it way up here. So, well, one thing at a time. Let's, this is a good start, but it's not tuned yet. So now okay. I'm, going to give it, I'm going to give it back to Max and Josie, and they can, we can see how they're doing on theirs. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start cutting these bands. Um, got my, awesome. got that one off. Got the first and one. It's already, it's already starting to pop up a little bit. Uh, so let's get need it down there, yeah. this, this one off. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, it's, um, let's see. Yeah, it's How's it's, your definitely, it's definitely. Uh, okay, that, that's say, great. That looks great. Now it's well, not tuned yet, but that is absolutely perfect. So now let's let's go ahead and tune mine up, and then then uh, Max and Josie will tune theirs up. Now, what does tuning up mean? Now, boy, I don't have a microphone, but what I'm going to do is pluck the pluck the little strings and listen to it. And you can hear that they're di different tensions. And what mm -hmm. I want to do is get them all to sound the same, because then I know they're all at the same tension. And how yeah. do you do that? I'm going to start wrapping around the edges and really adding some tension oh, okay. into these bands. This pulls them tighter and tighter. And as I pull mm -hmm. them tighter and tighter, it goes... It goes up and up and up, and it's too bad that I don't have the microphone because it's really you listen to it. You go boink 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 boink, and you try and get them all the same, the same pitch. And we're just going to continue to wrap, and as we wrap, it makes those things tighter and tighter, and the tensegrity, the tendril, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can kind of see cool. it's getting up and up and up, and it's, it's mm -hmm. rising up. This angle isn't giving you as much to see as I was hoping, but. Uh, you hopefully get the idea, and I'm going to continue to do that. If you do it too much, it'll break, so there's a, mm -hmm. uh, a little danger, which is nice because it's live TV, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. You can, you can definitely see that it's getting, it's getting larger and... Larger and larger and larger, mm -hmm. yeah. Or higher and higher, and so forth. All right. I'm going to see if I can get a note out of this thing. I got the microphone right here, so... Okay. Hear that? Sounds, yeah. yeah oh, okay. you could definitely hear the difference between those two. Do it. Do it one more time, Max. Do well, the. Well, actually, I was doing the same string this whole time. Oh no! Do different strings. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a. Here's a different one. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Did you just burp? Burp. <laughs> No, I, uh, I scraped it on the microphone. Uh, <laughs> kind of sounds like a bass, a bass guitar it does, or something. Yeah, it's it's that's uh, this this rubber band, uh, this uh, or rather this uh, this underwear material is working out well for us. As you can see, it and hear it. Now, I would say while the underwear material is really cool stuff to have for TV because our viewers can see it so well, mm -hmm. part of the idea is that if you use the clear, stretchy bead cord, it really looks more like it's floating, floating right. on air. And that's, um, that's kind of some of the appeal. So yeah. while, it's, while okay. it's, you really want to look for the, uh, and, and, and the thicker stuff, the one millimeter stuff, is, yeah. uh, is a, and it's cheap. I mean, it's dirt cheap. I mean, it's like a buck for a. 
I don't know, five yards of it or something. It's another just problem. Different. Yeah, def definitely but, another problem with this material is we're running out of room on the hook. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but well, but that actually, looks... Sorry, uh, we have a question from one of our campers. Um, his name's Pierce. He was asking if we could replace uh, that material with fishing line since we're on the topic of substitutions. Yeah, great question. I would say no. I mean, you can, but because of what you want is this, this stretchy cord is stretchy, and that's what makes the whole erection process work. So while fishing line could be used, yes, yes, you could use it, but it'd be a lot harder. You'd have to, um, uh, it wouldn't be as easy a process because the stretchiness really helps you. Very cool. So, so having the clear strings compared to Max's white uh, stretchy rope gives it the, like the illusion that it's defying gravity, that it's just floating there all by itself. There's nothing supporting it. Makes it look a little cooler. It's all about looking cool. I mean, you know, why do it if it doesn't look cool, right? I mean, that's why we're doing yeah. it. Yeah. So the stretchiness in the in the string is actually the most important part of having the string connecting each pole to each pole. Yeah, the, the stretchiness puts that tension on there, and the mm -hmm. tension is what makes the whole structure um, rise up. It makes it mm -hmm. makes the structure you know come up from the ground, and um, that that is pretty important. So yeah, um, I will say because I guess I haven't brought it up before. Let me just let me just show people one thing. When you use a stretchy cord, um, let me cut off the knot. This is stretchy cord. And in order to cut it, or I'm sorry, in order to turn into a loop, don't mm -hmm. make like a square knot. What you want to do is make what's called an overhand loop. And it's really simple. Just okay. make a loop, and then you kind of have to hold it in your teeth, I've found, to hold. You kind of hold these two ends right here in your teeth while you pull. Okay. But then it's, it's a really, if you don't, it comes apart. So you kind of have to, while you make the overhead loop, you have to hold the other two ends, either get a partner to help you or hold it in mm -hmm. your teeth. And then it's nice and tight. So, yeah. See, I got on my teeth. You can't see that, but there. <laughs> but now it's good and tight. So that's um, that's how that works there. And, and Matt, uh, might you be able to show us how to make that loop since your cord is a little more visual? Yeah. Um, hang on. How did you? How did you? Did okay, you? just an overhand loop. Try it, and I'll tell you if you do it right or wrong. Uh, not actually. Oh, Challenge come on. time. Make a loop. Just, just make a loop in the string. Just, just make a loop All in right, the string. Got a loop. So, Max, grab one end in your right hand and one end in your left hand. All right. Put, put them together. Put them together. Put them together. Now, take those two and... Uh -huh. uh, grab okay. the other end with your other hand. I, I need a string. I'll get a string and I'll show you, Max. <laughs> uh, like this. I've got an old apron here, but this should work. Yeah. Okay, see, I've got two pieces here. Uh -huh. Put them together like this. Okay, there's two pieces like that. Then just tie a... Uh, oh, so just tie them together. Okay, that's easy. Yeah. I've, I've, I've done stuff like that before. I just didn't know what it's called. It's called so. a loop. Well, I'm very cool. Well named. All right. There you go. And now we all know how to tie. And, and that's the thing that this this stretchy beading cord is a little bit funny because mm -hmm. the overhand loop works, but if you try and do a square knot or a sheet bend, it just doesn't yeah. seem to work. Yeah, so. this stuff reacted very well to a square knot. So yeah. Yeah. okay, imagine because it it kind of can hold onto itself a little bit easier than the the slick stretchy cord can. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, now, if you take several of these tendrils that you just made, mm -hmm. there they are. and you stack them one on top of another, then you can make towers. Now here's one I made earlier. You can see I've got tower, oh, wow. I've got tendril on top of tendril. I'll move back so you can see it and get my, my head out of there. But you can see, and it's, it's really kind of cool. I put it down and it's, you know, it's a little bouncy and springy, it's, and it looks really cool on my desk. I've I got to tell you, you know, people come to my office, and they mm -hmm. see this thing, and they go, wow, that, that's pretty cool. How'd you make that? I go, well, buy mag make magazine volume six, you'll learn. But now you know without having to do that, so that's <laughs> great. <laughs> Very cool. So do you have any tips or tricks on how to make each tendril connect to other tendril? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, what I did was I just connected 
um, I just connected each uh, eye hook to the loop, the big 15 inch loop in the middle and just wrapped it around and it stays pretty well. There's a million ways to do it. I'm not here to say that this is the only possible way to do this. You can make this, but this worked out pretty well for me and it was easy. I would tell people that if they wanted to, they could experiment with bent towers by changing the tension and you can get some really cool structures, perhaps even bridge-like structures. Um, the sky is the limit with this, and I think that if you do have a little bit, it's a particularly good rainy day project, if you do have a little bit of time, readers or, or, or campers could make their own and different, different than I've done it, and, and then post their, um, post their projects and let other people sort of wonder at the glory of what they've made. And if you guys post your projects, make sure you add the hashtag of MakerCamp to yeah. your post. We would um, love and to so so, Bill, uh, is the length of each dowel critical to the structural integrity of the whole project, or can you mix lengths, or you know, make all of them longer, or all of them shorter? That's a good question too. There's nothing critical about the eight-inch lengths I picked. I just picked it okay. because it was an, it, you know, a dowel is 36 inches long. Mm -hmm. And um, I could, well, that doesn't even make sense, uh, but it doesn't divide evenly. But I just thought eight inch was nice. You know, eight inch worked yeah. out for me. And you can use whatever size you want. I mean, if you want to make really big, you know, two inch dowel structures, have at it, you know. Like I said, mm -hmm. I've seen people earlier make coffee tables and stuff, and they use some pretty hefty. They, instead of using elastic, they use wire. And if you use mm -hmm. wire, then you use something called the turnbuckle to apply the tension. But you can do whatever you want to do. And so, so what's a turnbuckle? Well, a turnbuckle is a piece of hardware you get at the hardware mm -hmm. store. And what it's got two uh, hooks, two uh, screw eyes on either end. And when you okay. turn a mechanism, it brings the two screw eyes closer together, and that puts that tensions up whatever um, is attached to it. You just go to the hardware store and say, show me your turnbuckles, and I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> and they'll guide you right to them. Yeah, the, I had a picture. It'd be way easier with a picture, but I don't have a picture. But, you know, you can Google turnbuckle. It, it, they're there. And that's what but the, the point is, is if you're doing something big and not using stretchy cord but using wire, then, yeah. then you need turnbuckles to make this happen. So okay. I've, had a, I've had a bit of a brainwave. We're starting to run out of the uh, elastic here. So uh, uh, for the little 10-inch loops on the, uh, on the second... Uh, uh, the second story, I just use rubber bands. So we'll see how well that works. Awesome. Kind of having the connections right now, Max. What? You're cutting the connections right now to show yep. us how those work. Cool. Yep. So we're kind of economizing on the elastic here. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously need more tension in these things, but. Uh, well, wrap them, Nick. Yeah. Uh, wrap them. Yeah. Not Nick. Wrap them, Max. Just keep doing that. So, uh, Max, are you finding that the thicker cord is, is harder to wrap around each eye hook? Yeah, because you kind of run out of spit. Here's, hang on, here's the other one. As you can see, that's just a big ball of elastic there. You just kind of run out yeah. of space on the hook. So I wouldn't actually recommend that anyone use this. Mm -hmm. are, are the size of the eye, if you, say, used a thicker stretchy cord or that's all you have available, could you use a larger eye, eye hook as well or eye hoop? Oh, of course. If if you used if you made this bigger, everything you know, just go to the. These officially are called number two sixteen screw eyes, which are tiny, Ooh. tiny. But you can yeah. use much larger screw eyes, and you know, you can you can make this as big as you want to, you know, as big mm -hmm. as you're capable of, as big as you can afford. Very cool. So, Bill, what's the coolest thing you've seen built um, with using the tensegrity principle? Um, you know, if you go online, there's just a million really cool, large, I mean, really extra large sculptures. And they're mm -hmm. not just these towers. They're, they go off in a million directions, and they look great. I would, I would encourage anybody who's interested just to Google the word tensegrity structure and, and just kind of marvel at what people have done and see if they can replicate it themselves using the simple, simple model uh, technique we've talked about here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Max, how is it? How's it coming? Are you attaching the two? Rubber bands are together now? Rubber bands are breaking, so ooh. They're a little on the old side. They're kind of old and fatigued and snapping a lot, so. But he's working on it. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We are, we are, we we, we have the spirit of ingenuity within us. We, we can. Uh, That's why you guys are 
junior counselors slash make lab interns. Uh, so, Bill, you want to talk a little bit more about your remaking history uh, video podcast you have? Okay, I'll be glad to. You know, I, I haven't been as diligent on it as I should be, and, and I appreciate Meg's indulgence on that. But to go along with every episode of remaking, sorry, every um, uh, remaking history column that I write, yeah. I try and uh, do a, a quick video that kind of shows uh, another perspective on how to make that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the last one that's up on the Make website is actually the um, the Oliver. And the Oliver, you probably don't know what an Oliver is. An Oliver is an ancient kind of piece of metalworking tool. And it's it, it sort cool. of revolutionized the Industrial Revolution back in the year 1400. And mm -hmm. it's kind of a cool machine. Now, we didn't, we're not making an actual Oliver, because an actual Oliver is a really giant hammer. And it's mm -hmm. heavy and hard. But we made a model of it. And I think there's this kind of cool pixelated video that's on the website. I think it's on there now. And that looks, uh, that's pretty good. There's, uh, there's another uh, uh, video of a bag press, which is an ancient Egyptian uh, machine that they used to press uh, oil out of uh, olives and, and uh, grape juice out of grapes. And that's a pretty mm -hmm. cool project. And I think you know, all these make good science projects. are just kind of fun to do. Um, there's been some other ones. Um, Escape me right now while I'm thinking of it, but I've done a lot. You can just kind of look on the website and and um, and see what's there. Very cool. So Max and Josie, do we have any questions from the campers? Um, not yet. Not me. Um, let's see. So both of uh, what you were talking about previously, so both those things actually transfer forces between each other, like the tensegrity tower, right? Um, sorry, back, back up oh. a little bit. I'm not sure I got your question. Never mind. That's okay. Uh, so Max, have you attached the two tendrils together yet? I have not. I, I got to say, actually, the one with the rubber bands on it, uh, now that it's together, actually looks a little yeah. bit better than the uh, than the other one. Very cool. It's. Uh, it's so I think I'll make that one the foundation. So uh, awesome. I'll uh, I'll just. Uh, so Bill, when you put the towers together, you connect the two tendrils on top of each other to the side of each other. Are they supposed to move, or are they? Or should they be rigid and move as one whole structure? Can they all move independently, or how how should it feel once it's connected? Well, they should, you know, rigid is a weird word because everything kind of springy there, but yeah. they shouldn't move. I mean, again, if you've got, if you want them to move and that's how you prefer to make it, go ahead and make it that way. The way yeah. I've made it, the way most of these towers are made is that they're kind of hardwired in there. You, you kind of wrap them around, loop them in there so they don't move. But, you know, you're free to experiment the way you want to, want to try it. Very cool. So... Um, can you explain a little bit more of the, the laws of physics, like maybe what is tension and what is compression for some of our viewers who might not know those exact terms? Yeah, sure. Um, if I take a member, a structural member, they have names like spar, strut, column, mm -hmm. uh, hunk of wood, whatever you want to do it. If, when it's holding up a building, it's going to, there's certain stresses that are going to be placed upon it. If I press on both ends towards, towards each other, that's called a compressive stress. Mm -hmm. If I pull on both ends, well, that's a tension stress. Okay. Now, if I twist the ends, I'll get into this. If I twist one <laughs> end this way and one end this way, well, mm -hmm. that's a shear, or that's a torque or a shearing uh -huh. stress. And... Um, Basically, when you build a building, you want to build a building in such a manner that the things you use to build it are strong enough to withstand all these things. Otherwise, you know, it collapses, and that's not what you want to have happen. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, but that's basically, you know, if you're, you know, if you have any interest in building things, or you know, you were a budding civil engineer, you would yeah. spend a lot of time computing the various compressive shear, <laughs> torque stresses. Um, tension stresses yeah. on the various members to know if the building you're building is actually going to stand and hopefully it will. Yeah. So uh, what happens if, say, a mischievous person or maybe a curious person cuts one of the cords on the tensegrity tower? 
would the whole thing collapse into nothing, or would it still hold together? Well, that's a really good question. In these really simple tensegrity structures that are made of three columns and just a few tension members, if yeah. you were to cut one, it would pretty much fall over, okay? Because then the integrity of the structure is wrecked and it, it's no good anymore. But if you had a much more complicated tensegrity structure that maybe had, say, 20, 21 members in it plus a whole lot of cords, mm -hmm. you would still get damage, but the damage would be far more localized. But, you know, getting... You know, back to your question, Tyler. If you were on this th on this tendril, if you were to cut one of them, it would just fall over. Oh. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like a last resort thing. We've uh, cool. actually got a question awesome. from a camper over here. Wonderful. Um, yeah, uh, Izzy asks, "What's the biggest tower you've ever made?" Oh, good question. Good question. All right, really good question. I'll tell you. I did a project for Popular Mechanics. This was uh, two summers ago. Mm -hmm. And we made a hammock holder. It was a tensegrity hammock holder. And basically, it was big enough to hold three people in hammocks in my backyard. We made oh, it. Wow. We, yeah, we made it out of uh, pipe, an uh, inch and a half, is that what? It was like an inch and a quarter, inch and a half steel pipe and um, really, really big sort of ropes and members. But it was really kind of cool because three people could swing happily from this Tensegrity hammock holder. And um, I guess if you're interested, look up Tensegrity hammocks on the internet. You'll probably go to that, that make web, or sorry, that Popular Mechanics website and see it there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, I actually have a, you were speaking about Bucky Fuller earlier, who used to live in Sebastopol, California, where we're located. Seriously? Um, I have his, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. I don't know for how long, but he definitely did. Um, so I have a picture of his dome that he built. It's uh, using the same principles that we're using today. Let's get it right there. And so that's his dome he built. Um, he built that in 1962. Wow. So, oh, go ahead, Max. Sorry. Uh, in fact, when, when I heard about this tensegrity principle, uh, like yesterday, it immediately reminded me of mm -hmm. uh, something else I know about called a space frame. And a space cool. frame is, a, is basically, it's a framework or a lattice where each joint can be a hinge. It can be completely freely rotating, but the frame oh, as a whole will still be really rigid. So to demonstrate this, I actually built one out of pencils and rubber bands. Uh, just before we went on air. So this is, I found this on the internet. This is apparently the simplest possible space frame. It's just uh, eight, eight, it's got eight uh, rigid members mm -hmm. and they're held together with rubber bands. And each joint itself is really loose, but the structure as a whole is rigid. It's actually pretty strong. Mm -hmm. so, so you're uh, using the rubber bands as hinges? Yeah. Very cool. And instead of dowels this time, you're just using normal pencils. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, I believe race cars use these uh, for their frames because they're so rigid and strong. Oh, wow. Very cool. So, Max, did you get it all? Did you get both the... Uh, yep, and there are those what are you together. guys working on it? Yep. Very cool. How does it feel? Is it is it like super rigid? Do you feel like you could put a little weight on it or... Uh, I wouldn't put a lot of weight on it. It's uh, it's it's it compresses a fair way, uh, uh, wow. quite a ways. But uh, more importantly, does it stand up by itself? It does. It does. Uh, hang on. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Good and job. I'm, I'm working on the third story awesome. now. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, Bill, how much do you think uh, this particular tower, the one that you built, how much weight do you think it could hold? This one? Yeah. Could this it hold one? Like a book? Uh, it hold like yeah. a book or maybe I don't know. Let's look. I don't know. I'll put something on it. We'll see. <laughs> uh, if, uh, a, no. Yeah, wait, wait. If it's a okay. balance thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not no. much. Not much. Darn. But, you know, like this little one. Here, you guys, look. This little one mm -hmm. we just made. Point this down. Let's see what it does. Whoops. Tech support help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so here's this, here's my tensegrity thing. Will it hold the book? Will it hold the no! book? No! <laughs> no! Oh, it just flattens book. all the way down. We need, we need something. Will it hold this piece of paper? 
Hopefully. Yes, it holds that. <laughs> will, will it hold the paper and this? Yes, it holds the oh, stretch wow. magic. Thing. So it holds stuff, but it's not terribly strong. <laughs> not terribly strong. Very cool. So if you want to use it for like holding a couple papers while you read or <laughs> did something like that, or say a desk use or something. Yeah, Very Tyler, cool. it's not it's it's not about practicality <laughs> here. It's about the art. It's about the art of tensegrity, not the practicality. Yeah. Probably the the engineering in me coming out and wanting to find yeah. a use for it or something like that. Very cool. So, do we have any questions from the campers? Yeah, um, we have a question from a camper on YouTube who's asking if a dowel or a string breaks, can you fix it? Can you fix Could the structure? Again, Josie, sorry. So, oh, um, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I just cut out. Okay. On the end. Uh, well, the question is, uh, if a dowel or a string breaks, can you fix it? Yeah, I mean, you sure, sure you can. It's, it'd be uh, unlikely that a dowel would break because yeah. you're, you know you're just not putting that much uh, weight on it. Now the strings break. There's no two ways about that. And when they break, it's kind of a disaster. As I said before, it all kind of flops over. So you have to mm -hmm. kind of go ahead and re redo it. But you know, I mean, yeah, it's fixable. It's just a matter of cutting a new piece of beading uh, of stretch magic uh, cord and, and putting it back in there. But no big deal. Or or if it comes untied, just retie it. That ha that's happened to me. No big deal. It's easy enough to repair. Very cool. Great. How's it going, Max? Um, well, uh, it's interesting. The uh, because I was running so low on elastic, I actually mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the the uh, the the two bands that are supposed to be 15 inches on the on the third story are going to be nine and a half. Because th that's you know half of what I had left. So uh, this is going to be kind of interesting to get it together. Um, uh, this could take a while. So uh, check back. <laughs> so Bill, I heard. Um, I don't think there are very many questions right now from the campers. So Bill, do you uh, you gave a speech or a talk? I believe a couple maker fairs ago about black powder. <laughs> and why kids should learn how to make black powder, possibly, or why it's important mm -hmm. to understand? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I did an article in a past Make magazine, and mm -hmm. uh, the idea was to was to kind of, it was sort of like remaking history. I mean, if you look at it, black powder, you know, gunpowder, is, you know, in my mind at least, the most uh, important, most significant chemical discovery that... Uh, people have ever come up with. So it's, it's really important that, mm -hmm. that it's there. And it's, it's pretty easy to make from household items. So the idea then was to say uh, on Make Magazine, well, let's show people how to make their own black powder. Well, there was some pushback from the company lawyers on that. <laughs> and, um, as it turned out, although we, we, we ran most of the article, we mm -hmm. actually did not include the recipe, the proportions in the article itself. Mm -hmm. And I guess I understand why you want to do that, but really the, um, it's not hard to find. I mean, if you want to know, I mean, it's, it's, it's there. You take three chemicals, charcoal, and it's not like the kind of charcoal you get in briquettes. It's kind of yeah. charcoal you have to make. And you, you make it by, by heating air to high temperature in the absence of oxygen. It turns black but it doesn't burn, and that's called charcoal. And if you oh, do it right, it's this very pure form of carbon. And that's an important ingredient in gunpowder. The other, another important ingredient in gunpowder is a chemical called sulfur. And sulfur is widely available. I mean, you can get it at all sorts of you know, uh, um, home stores and places where they sell uh, fertilizer and things like that. And the most important thing is an ancient chemical called saltpeter. Its chemical name is potassium nitrate. And potassium nitrate, I mean, it's been around forever, and you can find that. I'm not going to go into where you can find it now. I'm going to find it online, but there's easy places to find it. Make a long story short, mm -hmm. if you mix small, and let me, you know, let me say that again, small, like gram-sized yeah. quantities of these chemicals together in the right proportion, and you really, really spend some time to mix them thoroughly, Mm -hmm. you, you actually get gunpowder invented in the 12th century, and it's the, the chemical that changed you know, history 
for the you know for the better for the worse however you want to look at it. But mm -hmm. um, you know I did a talk on on that, and um, we actually made a little bit while I was up on stage. It's just that easy, and and you know it doesn't blow up. It's not an explosive. I guess mm -hmm. you know, campers should know there's a difference between explosives and um, propellants. And you know, an explosive okay. is something that when it explodes, that, that when it ignites, it ignites with so much vigor that the gases, the product of combustion, exit at supersonic speeds. But propellants are a notch below that, way below that. So things like gunpowder, which are propellant, they burn. They burn with a lot of vigor, but they don't. Uh, they don't explode. So I, I for one, don't think it's all that terribly dangerous. But I guess in the wrong hands, you know, people can hurt themselves, and you have to be careful because what might be just fine for you and me and other responsible people might be abused by people less responsible. So you have to be careful, and I think that's where Make was coming from when they okay. decided not to publish yeah. the, um, the proportions. So is it illegal to make black powder, or is it...? Well, probably, but um, in the quantities we're talking about, I mean, it's illegal yeah. to do a lot of things. Um, I, I, I actually don't know. I wrote a letter. It's interesting that you asked me. I wrote a letter to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and I, mm -hmm. I said straight out, you know, is it illegal to make small, qu small quantities of black, black powder? And they wrote me back with a non-answer, so I'm not really sure if they're just kind of, maybe it's legal and they're trying to discourage this information or whatever, but I can't, so when people say, well, is it illegal, I'm just going to say, I don't know, talk to, uh, talk to your police Check with your state what, laws. Yeah, check, like check, check with your state laws and see yeah. what they say. I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's basically, it's like, uh, it's like the local police department's attitude towards Dan's combustion cannon, because I believe he, we're going to, you might be seeing that. Uh, I, or, or I or have already seen it. Uh, we, I believe he actually asked them about it, and he, they basically said, don't cause a ruckus. Don't have any trouble. We'll leave you alone. No ruckus. <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, we've got several questions from campers going on here. Um, okay. So well, we, uh, Ben yeah. is asking, how much does uh, making a um, integrity structure cost, like for a general price range? What's going on? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Bill. Did you catch the question? Yeah. All of a sudden, okay. my, 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 I need tech support. Hold on. Can you see me and hear me? We can yeah. see you and we can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Anyway, the question is, how much does it cost? Well, my friend, it is dirt cheap. I mean, you are really looking at less than $5 for your entire Tensegrity Tower. I mean, Very the dowels cool. are going to cost you maybe 2 bucks. The stretchy mm -hmm. cords, maybe 2 bucks. The eye hooks, maybe a buck. I think five bucks, and, but for that, you can probably make, yeah, it's not going to cost you. Well, actually, no, let me think about no. that. You need a couple dollars, so it might be as much as seven bucks, but it's just not very much in the scheme of things. Yeah. You know. It's on the low end. It's on the low end of things, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, and we have, we have time for one more question. So yeah. go ahead, Jason. Um, okay, uh, from YouTube. Um, they're saying, uh, are there practical applications for it, or, vis or is it more for art? Um. Yeah, well, that's a good question. At this mm -hmm. point, and is there something, you know, when you talk about tensegrity, it's so neat. It'd be great if we could, you know, find a, make, design a tensegrity building, or if we could, you know, make a bridge out of tensegrity. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's not really practical because it, the, the, the structure is awfully flexible. And uh, it's mainly at this point strictly sort of a, the, in the realm of the artists. I did say earlier that people did make chairs out of them and coffee tables and, and so forth. And I think that's a little bit of practicality. But, but by and large, it's, um, it's mostly just something that's fun and cool as opposed mm -hmm. to something that's terribly um, uh, useful and, um, and uh, terribly useful. Awesome. I can do my scissors on this one. Very nice, Max. Very Hold cool. it up again, Max. There you go. Let's yeah. see it again. <laughs> it's a little leaning. Awesome. Yeah, it stays up. Yeah. The leaning tower of tensegrity. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a bit of a hack job, but... <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, hey, it was, it was yeah. great having me. Let me just say once again that, um, you know, if you're interested... My new, uh, my new book, or my new edition of Backyard Ballistics is out soon. You might want to check that out. But I had a really good time being here. Hey, Absolutely. thanks for asking. 
Yeah, yeah, to learn all about to forces here. and tensions and make cool structures. So I want to thank you, Bill, for being here with us today, and of course, Max and Josie. Mm -hmm. um, so, Bill, if people want to get in touch with you or learn more about what you do, how could they find that out? Um, the easiest way is go to my website. It's mm -hmm. uh, williamgerstel.com. On the contact page, there's a form you can use to, to write me. Um, I get a lot of questions, so I'm not really, I, I got to apologize in advance. I'm not really able to answer individual questions on, you know, where do I get this particular piece of gear or how do I do that? I, I would say in advance, though, that if you, I think Make did publish the entire Volume 6 instruction somewhere, did they not? For this integrity tower? Yeah. Yeah, we have them right here. Yeah. Volume so, 6 of Make Magazine. And is that online now? Um, I don't know. I'll have to check back and get to you. But uh, they're also on G+. There's a link on our G+, page okay. for all the instructions and materials and everything you'll need. Okay. Great. Cool. And then uh, I just wanted to say again, uh, Bill has a video series about remaking history. You can find it at youtube.com slash make. Um, so thanks everyone for being with us today on Theoretical Thursday. Uh, I just want to mention tomorrow it's Field Trip Friday with NASA. Um, and so if you guys want to join our junior, uh, junior counselor hangout at 1.30, make sure you post under this uh, hangout on air post. Just say, I want to be in the junior counselor hangout. And we'll add you guys to our circles so when we get started we'll invite you. Um, if you guys have any more questions or comments, just post them under this post today. Um, and if you guys have built these at home today, please make a post, add the hashtag of MakerCamp, and we will post on them, check them out, and you know, if we find a couple that really jump out at us, we will post them on our page. So thanks, everyone, again, for being here. Thank you so much, Bill. My pleasure. And, thanks uh, for having me. We'll see you guys in one and a half hours at the Junior, camp, half, sorry, uh, at the junior Counselor Hangout. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.